Does net zero slow the pace of climate change? The idea is simple and seductive. If you have something and you offset that with negative something, you get nothing. While 2 plus 2 equals 4, 2 minus 2 equals 0. If all those damaging emissions can be cancelled out with negative climate emissions, the party can continue. But this is impossible for three reasons. First, there's not enough time left. Most governments have targets to achieve net zero in 2050. Some, like China, have a target of 2060. But all these are too far into the future to make any difference. The danger level which the IPCC says societies need to avoid is 1.5 degrees centigrade increase above the average temperature compared to pre-industrial times. We reached that in 2023. The really scary level that societies need to avoid is 2 degrees. This is much worse because it kicks off a chain reaction which will gradually make most of the planet uninhabitable. At current rates, we'll hit that 2 degrees in the early 2030s. So target of 2050 is a waste of time. It's like promising somebody a skiing holiday 30 years from now when there's no snow. The second problem is how to achieve net zero. How can societies offset emissions? How can they create those magical negative emissions? And there are two main ways. They can increase the number of areas which absorb CO2, like forests, or they can build machines to suck CO2 out of the atmosphere. Unfortunately, trees take decades to grow, and they need lots of land. There's not enough land to plant enough trees to suck up all the carbon that humans produce. Trees also burn when the temperature rises. They die and release all their carbon back into the atmosphere. So this plan doesn't work. Nor does the plan to build big carbon-sucking machines. For a start, we don't have the technology, and the experiments so far show that it'll be expensive and hard to pull off. And who's going to pay for it? And where, exactly, is all the carbon that's captured going to be stored so that it never, ever escapes? We don't know. Planting trees and carbon capture has another problem. It only removes one of the damaging gases from the atmosphere. It doesn't remove the others. So this plan doesn't work either. The third and most serious flaw in the net zero idea is that it fixes the wrong problem. The main problem today is not the emissions of greenhouse gases. It's the concentration of these gases. It's the build-up of emissions over the last 200 years that's the challenge. And net zero does nothing to fix that. So, to summarise. Net zero takes too long, we don't have the technology, and it fixes the wrong problem. It doesn't reduce the concentration of gases in the atmosphere, it doesn't even try. It only says that societies will try to stop making the problem worse in 30 years. Net zero actually takes us nearer the edge. Forget net zero. It's a dead end, which is exactly where we're heading unless we take a different approach.